and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julie McNeil Crafts. So today I am doing a collaboration with the lovely Angie B from Angie B Cards and Crafts. And yeah, we are doing a, a little make together. So we've both got the same sort of products and we've got the same brief and it'll be really interesting to see what we come up with. It, this took a while to put together, I have to say. When I do things with Dawn, we both buy the same things and so it's really easy to sort of put things together. Angie and I have very different tastes when it comes to craft, but I think that's what makes these challenges so fun. So first of all, trying to find something that we both had proved a bit... <laughs> proved a bit challenging but we got there in the end so we both have this set of stamps here Dilution, I bought them years ago I'm totally obsessed with Diane Reevely and Dilution things and I have a few bits and pieces but again even the stamps that we chose I've got a lot of like the big dresses and things and Angie has much more of the grungy sort of ones so but anyway we found that we both had this we both have this stencil from our Emma, mine's clean and neat and washed the rainbow stencil um, we've got three oxide sprays um, for this. She also let me have a black and white pen. Quite frankly she was planning on not letting me have it and I pouted because I was like you got your sprays uh, and I'm not playing if I don't get my black and white pen. So we've got a black and white pen. The brief is to take a piece of 7x7 seven seven cardboard and to make something with it. We also have a sheet of music and I requested gesso purely for practical reasons because um, I don't think the sprays will take as well. Um, not too bad when we're sort of spraying on as a background, but if I'm going to sort of colour in the stamps, um, you're not going to get the same movement into this paper. Um, so I requested gesso and I'm allowed clear gesso and clear gesso only. So that is what we are doing today. I love this music paper. It's really, really old, but also, I don't know if you can see, but look, somebody's obviously used it to learn to play and there's like little extra handwritten notes um, throughout it which I just think is absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, I'm going to start off with, yes you've guessed it, I'm going to expose some texture on the cardboard because let's face it, what's the point in using gorgeous gorgeous corrugated card if we can't expose the texture on it? So I'm just going to take a little corner and I'm just going to expose some of the texture. I'm really, really intrigued to see what um, Angie does with this. I mean, I definitely know these makes are gonna be so different because as I said, we have very, very different styles, but we're both out of our comfort zone with this one, to be honest. Um, I think when we work together, we're probably naturally out of our comfort zones anyway, as I said, just because um, of the styles. But then Angie, uses my stamps, she's in my design team, she uses my stamps, which I don't think are automatically her style to be honest, and yet she always knocks it out of the park. And I think it's nice, I think it's nice having somebody that's got a completely different style to yours, um, and doing things like that because um, it does make a difference. Now what my plan is, I'm just going to take a piece of this music paper and I'm going to glue it down with some gel medium. But, yeah, let's get some gel medium. I have a plan, not much of a plan. Like I've got, as, as far as my plan extends is stick the paper on the cardboard and tear the paper. That's, that's the sum total of my plan. After that, who knows what will happen because yeah, I've not thought beyond that. So I'm going to grab a little bit of gel medium oops, and get this splattered all over here. I'm just going to apply a thin coat because I don't really want to be waiting forever for it to dry. But it is the best substance on earth for um, making sure your stuff stays stuck. Um, and that is because your gel medium has an element of flex to it. This is um, the Indigo Blue Slap It On, which I quite like. Uh, my gel medium of choice is um, the Pretty Gets Gritty one, but I haven't got any of that left at this current moment in time, which I need to rectify soon. So there's not glue on that part, but that's good. Right, so this means I can now sort of choose where I want to place it, because I do want the music on most of it. Rub that down and then, oops, clearly I've not put enough just there. And then I'm going to just grab the paper and I'm just going to tear it around so that I've got a very 
loose organic feel to it and then those extra bits of paper we will use before it's stamping on in a moment. I can see I've put the paper on scone but it's all going to add to the charm of it. Now I've obviously not put enough of that gel medium on because it is lifting but we'll, as I said, we'll deal with all that. But we're just at the beginning. We're just at the beginning. That's fine. All good. Not, uh, the trouble is I think I, let, I had it too thin <laughs> and I let that side dry before it had a chance to stick so let's just get a bit more of that on. Nice glaze it's creating though. <laughs> okay so I'll get that down there and then in this middle bit here where there's no sticky I'm just going to, I kind of want it to tear straight I'm going to encourage it because I don't, there we go. I'm going to tear down there and then I'm going to roll that back. Now I would have liked a little bit of white gesso because it means I could have it, it really brought that texture alive just by rubbing a bit of white on it. We'll see what I managed to do with a white pen. I suppose if I use a paint pen rather than a uniball pen I might get away with doing it that way. So yeah that's an idea. I think I will do that. Right so now I've created, I've managed to see the texture from my cardboard because I just think what's the point in using cardboard and I like the fact I've kept the edges really really rough. I'm just going to stick some of these corners down. Right now we go to spray. Now when it comes to spraying Angie is the queen and yeah spray, spraying for me can be a little bit hit and miss to be honest. So we'll see how we go. I am trying to decide whether to spray through this or whether to spray colours down and then ghost or let's yeah let's do a bit of ah oh, who knows who knows the trouble is I can't even cover over it with white gesso if I don't like it because it's not on the list I think she's a bit mean but hey ho <laughs> it's all right I love her I'm allowed to say things like that right what I tend to do is I like to spray in my journal um, I'll show you a really cool page that I must do. Look at that. That's all just been when I've been using my gloss sprays and leftovers. What glorious is that look? Anyway, that needs to be a page sometime. Right, so um, I'm just trying to find a, a page that I can work on. I'm quite fussy. Oh, there we go. There's one I was uh, doing on a live. That's still in the process of being built up, so we'll go there. Right, I think I will... A little bit of the yellow. Just add a bit of colour that way. Ooh, this is exciting. And then I think I'm going to lay the stencil down. Let's see if I can. It's my picked raspberry. So we've got picked raspberry, mustard seed, and mermaid lagoon. A bit not what I was. Oh, right, okay. Okay, okay. I think I am now going to pop a bit of water onto that and flip it around and try and. There we go. So we've got those blue swirly bits going this side. Okay, there we go. Interesting. Right, I'm also just going to clean off my stencil in there, so we'll just do that and fold it over. Right, I'm going to waft this dry. I'm not thrilled at the minute, if I'm honest. Um, so I think we need a bit more work, but obviously we will be bringing um, some of these imagey parts in at some point. So I'm going to give this a waft and then sprinkle some water on, and then I might try and lighten with a bit more pink and yellow. Do you have to be careful using these three colours together because there is a distinct possibility you could get mud because obviously with the pink we've basically got the three primary colours together there. So um, this is why I want to dry in between. Um, Distress also have a product that's a glaze that you can put on in between your layers and I've just realised I never gessoed that which I had intended to. 
Um, but yeah, I might gesso it and then put another layer on. Um, so yeah, you can get like a glaze which sort of sets the layer. It's fine because I actually wanted the gesso for when I was sort of colouring the stamp a little bit. Um, but we'll just see how we go. This uh, seems like it is wanting to give up on me. It's making a funny rattle. I can see it going to put on the... So, let that dry. If there was a dodgy ev edit there, I am sorry. Um, my memory card ran out of space. So I'm just going to try flicking this with water and see what occurs. Um, I'm not completely sure. I'm not liking it so far, in all honesty. But, you know, we're just at the beginning stages. So you just keep, if you don't like it, you just keep going till you do. Right, I am thinking that if I get a paint pen, let me see, what have I got? That I could knock this back, because white paint is on the list. Let's see if we can. Don't splat it and just try and. I just want to try and knock this back a bit. Where there's a will, there's a way. as well of the overall project, which is cool. Let's get some more of that down. wonder if Angie will think that this is me cheating. Personally, I don't think it is because I did suggest um, the Oxide ink pads and um, as well as the sprays and Angela was saying well you know we could if need be we can spray onto a mat and use the oxides as sprays and sometimes like completely limiting your supplies and you're not able to pull it like I would totally be pulling out the white gesso right now and um, knocking it back to get this more subtle tone that I'm getting I'm actually really liking it now see it's amazing the difference a bit of white Part of that is my fault in that oh, in, in my hurry I forgot to clear it in gesso. But I'm quite, yeah, I'm liking the look that this is creating. But yeah, so Angie said like, you know, it, it makes you kind of think about your products differently. So right now I am using my white pen differently. So I've had to, I know what I wanted to do but I didn't have the products to do it. And I think that this is what the whole idea of these collabs are about. We all gradually build up lots and lots of products, um, you know, if we've been cra crafting for any length of time. And if we've just started or we're watching somebody that has quite a big collection, we can kind of feel like, oh, we need everything that they have to create what they create. No, you just look at what you've got and do it in a way that, that you can do it. So now I'm going to be able to grab and emphasise that texture, which was one of the things that I really wanted to do. So I found a way around it. So happy. So, so happy. Right, so. I'm just going to get this all on. Get this looking a bit better. Um, I think I want to knock some more of this back even more. Let's hope my pen doesn't run out on me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Right, so I think let's give that a waft. Actually, maybe we don't need to. I'll let it dry naturally because I was thinking I'd stamp these, but I might cut out some of these element, not uh, stamp and cut some of these first. So I can't now. See, this is why I wanted the gesso. I can't now move on to the sort of card that I would use um, because we don't have it on the list. We literally just have the music paper. 
so we're going to be stamping and colouring on music paper and the only colouring mediums that we have are these sprays. Thankfully, with the fact that um, the colours that both Angie and I had, we didn't even have similar colours, it was funny, although Angie tends to have most sprays and most <laughs> most sprays and most colours. My, uh, my spray collection isn't quite as uh, extensive. So, but one good thing about this is that we do have the three primary colours from this, so actually we can make um, any colour we want from that. So that is one advantage. So I'm just going to get my clear gesso because as I said, it didn't matter too much with the background there, but as I um, start to paint, um, if I was to do that, there would be absolutely no movement at all because this paper is just literally going to absorb it, um, which would be a bit frustrating. The gesso is still not going to give me the movement that I would like you know, using a proper watercolour or mixed media card, but it will be better than what we had. So I'm just going to pop that clear gesso on. And as I said, that is purely a technical thing. As you can see, it's not doing anything to the aesthetics of it at all or the way it looks. It's just, um, yeah, purely to make what we've got work better for us. So I'm just going to go and grab... Um, a blending mat or something to put my sprays onto it so that I can use that as a paint palette and then we'll see where we're going to go from there. Okay so I am going to stamp some of these elements out. I know I want the mushrooms. I absolutely adore mushrooms so they are definitely, definitely going to get stamped. So I'm going to do I think maybe three of these. So I've got one makes me want to have that like quirky mushrooms with musical notes in them. I mean is that not scream at Alice in Wonderland or what? <laughs> Love it. Right. So that. I think as I said I think I'll do three of these. I wonder, which, I wonder which stamps of the set that Angie will use. I think she'll go for the mushrooms as well. Um, but I'm not sure what other ones. Also just looking at this set, I've had this for years and now this has black and all of these are completely clear. I have a feeling that these may not have been used. How shocking is that? Right, so we'll get some of these stamped as well. I don't know how much we're going to fit on this page but thankfully we were like two music sheets and this is me only still using. Actually I've still got a few scraps so we're alright um, for my one big one. So we're fine. So I'm just going to see how many of these I can get out. I'm not sure if I want to use the big squiggles yet so I'm just going to stick with these shapes for just now. We'll colour those. Um, I'll start colouring those. In between time I'm just going to gesso up this bit um, just so it can be drying in case I want more and then I can stamp more I'm sorry need about the glare on this so yeah, I'm so glad when I get my studio all proper because I'm hoping to get a proper lighting set up as well um, so that we don't have this sort of overhead sheen thing going on right, I'm just oops, going to put I've just popped it all over my desk over here Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of um, these sprays on here. That's kind of already mixed in with the yellow. That's the joy of it being a spray, but hey ho, I could have actually taken the lid off and um, taken it direct from the bottle. So that was my problem. That was me not thinking. So, ooh, they are very opaque. Which I should know because obviously I use them all the time as a spray. But as a paint, that is very, very, very opaque. So let's see if I can get a bit more water onto that so I can pull it out just a little bit. So I'm going to pop the pink onto the mushrooms. And then to get a blend of colours, I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow and blend that into the pink just so again we have that sort of two-tone look going on that's so alien see when you've got a preferred way of colouring um, 
it is so different, I'm doing it a different way. It's like completely out of my comfort zone here. Completely. So, get all of that on. And again, just try and thin it out. Now, there's a tiny bit of blue got into that yellow um, because of the way it's sprayed, and I'm noticing that as I start to paint because we're getting a bit we should be getting sort of like a an orangey coral tone as we mix those um two colours together but we're definitely getting more of a brown and as I said it's because the, the blue spray has gone over. It's not too much that it bothers me overly but yeah I can definitely see that it's there. I'm definitely gonna have to go in with my black pen to fix the line work on this a little bit. hoping that this is going to come together because um, I'm not liking the colouring style of it so far. <laughs> but I didn't like my background when I started with it and now I, I fairly, it's okay now. Um, so, you know, maybe the same will happen here. I might have to put the paints out again. Um, but as I said, that little bit of blue has just thrown the colours out a little bit. But we'll see. We'll see what occurs. Right. Try and get some water. On to us. So even though we're sort of using the pink and the yellow together the same way as we did on the head of the mushroom, the colours look completely different because we've got a majority of um, pink at the top and the majority of yellow at the bottom. So we're still getting a different sort of colour tone on that. And then I'm going to just take a tiny bit of that blue and let's see if we can get the the spots blue just to make the whole thing a little bit quirky because we can and I may just pop a little bit of that blue into the stem as well I don't know now that's bleeding out because I've not let it dry properly it's just a bit silly Yeah, so that's the first, first attempt. Um, definitely going to need some white pen magic with that. I would say, possibly some black pen magic too. It's needing something. Right. Yeah. No, oh, Angie, what have you done to me? Okay. Hmm. Not in love. Not a fan. I have to say. Right. Let's. I'm going to try making it a yellow mushroom this time. See if I prefer it yellow. Oh <laughs> uh, dear. So let's make this yellow. Let's see if we prefer that. Already I'm liking it. It's a lot brighter. Yellow just makes tends to make things pop. It truly is a fantastic colour. And it does tend to just lift something. So I, yeah, I definitely think I'm preferring, preferring the mushrooms yellow. So that's good. Right, um, let's see if I mix a bit of yellow. Okay, and a bit of pink. And a tiny bit of blue. It's too green now. So we're needing a higher tone of pink in there. bit more of a brown tone, fleshy tone. Oh look at that for a brown. There we go. So we've got that sorted. They're much more stem-like colours. So that's quite good. I like that. So I've got that in and then I'm going to try and 
use my water to wash that out to give, it, give us the tonal value just by the fact it becomes more watered out. might do is come in with a tiny bit of yellow just to give it some highlights to lift it a little bit. And I'm liking that set of mushrooms much more. Much happier with those. Right. And then we'll go in with some pink. Love pink spots. Yep. These ones are talking to me much more. Much, much more. So I think I will colour the other set that we've got there and some other colourways. Mm -hmm. okay. There we go. Cool. Right. So, what have we got here? We've got a little flower piece in here. So let's... Let's get the centre of this pink, I think. a softer colour and then I'm gonna I want these green so I'm going to go in with my yellow get that in first like so and then I'm gonna grab a touch of that blue mix that with the yellow and we're just mixing it on the paper and we're going to, that means we're getting different shades and tones in each of those leaves without trying too hard so that's all very cool and that's that one coloured okay so that's how they look right now um, I'm going to colour that one to match that and I think I'm going to stamp out a few more of those on the extra bit I've just gessoed then I'm going to fussy cut them out. I don't think I've got my best fussy cutting scissors beside me. I still don't know. I think they keep getting moved. Little fingers keep taking them. Yeah, this. Oh yeah, these little scissors are absolutely shocking. Right, so let's cut this out. And we may uh, we may get our black and. Um, black and white pens, definitely the white pens just to add a bit of highlight but I'm just trying to do a bit of fussy cutting together and then as I said I will go off camera and prep the rest so that we have all of these elements but at least you've seen sort of the thought process behind it a little bit. I'll go in and get those extra bits in a bit. Okay so we've got that and then and we'll have a few of them like this. So, yeah, I will be back when I've got my elements to arrange. Okay, so this is all my bits and pieces cut out. I will arrange some sort of scene with those. I'm kind of beginning to think that might be a bit too much yellow. <laughs> that maybe should have, but it might be alright if we split it up, maybe something like that. But what I thought would be cool would be to get some sort of cool foliage in the background. So I'm going to try this and we'll see if it works. So <laughs> thinking let's see if we spread out this blue because we've got it there and let's mix in some of that yellow as well. I'm going to spread it out and I'm going to stamp into it like so and then <laughs> I'm going to bring it onto, oh that's actually much more subtle than I expected it to be because in my head I was thinking oh because like when we sprayed through it was really quite dark so I think partly because this is quite dry so we are going to have to just maybe get a bit oops a bit more of these guys, I should stay, stay in my hands I'm sort of semi recording two videos at the same time um, I'm doing the Dawn and Julia Creators by the time this goes up will have been up a day and I'm doing this one but the Dawn and Julia creates quite um it's not a messy one <laughs> so I'll come back show the end cards and my hands will be clattered I will try and do it oh, see that's much juicier there 
Right, let's see what sort of impression we get with that. Oh, nice. So we're not getting a, a clean stamping either because we're going on to that corrugated card. Um, but I am liking the look that we are getting. It's definitely creating something. Okay. I like, I like. So far we've used our sprays as a spray, we've put them out and used them as a colouring medium and now I'm using them to stamp with. That is so cool. And as I said, that's just going to create a little bit of a background. And it's quite subtle, but it's going to create a little bit of a background. But actually, I'm enjoying it so much, I'm going to pop some leafage coming down as well. <laughs> okay, so that's a bit cool. I'm just going to move that out of the way for just now. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'd be surprised if Angie doesn't do this because we have included, although we didn't include an ink pad when we um, discussed it, as she was saying, are we using an ink pad? And I was like, certainly hope so, otherwise how are we going to stamp? <laughs> so I know that we sort of agreed after the fact about an ink pad and Angie really likes to use her ink pad to darken things. And normally I use my black um, pen but because this is very very rough um, I think I'm going to get a better effect using my ink pad um, and it's just going to help to frame it draw the eye in especially at this stage as well it kind of helps me to see what's going on inside the frame right, I'm heavier <laughs> I started doing it slightly heavier on that side and I was like oh actually I quite like that so now we're going around the whole thing a bit heavier there we go so we've got that, should we maybe even get some coming into the, there we go, into that texture there. Right, so I think there was too much yellow together when we had it all together. So I think I'm going to put one this side and I'm just going to commit to it, otherwise we can be here all day. <laughs> so let's, I'm not sure if we chose anything for a sentiment. I know we discussed like Tim Holt stickers and Angie didn't have any like a staple in my crafting and then I can't remember if we did decide on something. I do have a little sheet but I'm not sure I wrote it down. See Dawn, I don't know if you're watching this one but look, this is your glue and I can't get it to work. <laughs> Told you I'd break it. She reckoned I wouldn't be able to break this glue. Oh hang on. It's coming. But you know, we all know my reputation with glue. <laughs> Yeah, right, just gonna cut that down, which is probably a bad idea seeing as I've ripped everything else and it's now suddenly gonna be a straight edge, but hey ho. Right, so we've got that. And then let's have one higher up and slightly shall I get some cardboard? But still have some leftover cardboard from cutting down my shape. And then I can 3D this a little bit. Can't wait to see what Angie's done. I know it'll be very different because I said we just have completely different styles. Um, but I'm very intrigued to see what we both have and haven't done. I think this time I've remembered the brief a bit better. I think last time neither of us remembered the brief overly well. So. <laughs> Angie wrote it down and she made me write it down too. She double checked. We used to work together in, a, in another life, before the crafty life, so she obviously knows me well. It's like, yes, Julia's going to need to write this down. Right, let's get this down. Oh, I, I retract my words, Dawn. It's working again. For a moment there, I wasn't convinced. <laughs> that's not a reflection on the glue, that's a reflection on me. There we go, I thought to tear it this time. Let's see if I can get a quick tear on this one. It's just that the straight edge isn't going to work against all of that torn edge. There we go. How cool does that look? Right, so then we're going to sort of break this up with some foliage. Foliage provided by this funky flower thing going on. This is where the pink mushrooms that I didn't like <laughs> stamped on the back. Not waste anything. Right. So like Oh, I'm going to tuck that behind the mushroom. That's quite cool. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then we've got layer 
upon layer upon layer. That's how I like things. I like things to be very, very layered. It's looking a little bit seamy right now. Um, so, it's okay, I have a plan. I'm going to move that over there. I have a plan. What I'm going to do is leave that there a second. Um, part of me is wondering whether to have something up here or whether that's just a bit too much or maybe we could have it sort of poke. Oh, actually, I'm going to cut the flower parts out of this to break things up because I don't think I want any more of those. So let's, well actually I might now, now that I've started chopping into it. have a little bit more play with what we have and then I'm thinking there's a smaller stamp of this so if I stamp a few of those um, what I might do let's cut this down as well we could have sort of these extra bits sort of popping out here build up the height like so I'll work behind there. Mm. I don't know. Oh, actually, I could just. Yeah. And just so that the shapes are different. Um, there we go. So, yeah, they, we have. Um, we have that leaf stamp there, but slightly smaller. Um, now, I don't have any more pre prepared. Um, music paper, it's not jessled, but we'll just see how we go. We'll maybe get a slightly smaller stamp block. <laughs> right, and we we'll use this again. We might have to um, reactivate it. Put a little spritz of water. Right, there we go. Just stamp a few like that. Like so, and then I'll cut those out. Okay, so I have cut those out, and I just think just because of the style of the stamp and against all of this doodle border, uh, these doodly stamps, they just sort of lack definition a little bit. So I'm just going to take my Jane Davenport pen and I'm just going to sort of sketch in the petals of the flowers a bit because I just think that'll help it to work um, with this project slightly better. So again I'm just thinking that if we have a little bit more foliage and a different shape and type of foliage in the project that that just might lift it. A little bit as I said I'm just sort of doodling my definition in myself just because the way we actually chose to stamp this one um, and the style of the stamp um, it's not quite as defined I think it's probably sort of designed to stamp in black um, you know it's like silhouette stamp so um, but because we've done it this way I just sort of want to that's working quite well for me now Obviously I've still to glue all of that in, but I'm liking, I'm liking where we're going. And then maybe just sort of one there. We'll get that glued in and then I'll work out where we are going next. I sort of still to work out what we said about sentiments. I really genuinely can't remember. I did have my little sheet somewhere when I started, but I don't seem to remember there being anything about sentiments on it. So yeah, I don't know what we're doing with that. Oh. Have we clogged? Mind you, in all fairness, I have left it without the lid on whilst I was stamping that little bit. <laughs> there we go. Right. So we'll get these all stuck down. Sometimes I get to a stage where I think I've lost patter. 
and I'm at that stage I suddenly realise that I've just sort of been crafting and not talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to chop that down a bit because I'm going to adjust it tuck in here and it's not quite tucking as much as I would like. There we go. Now these bits here just look a bit random and a bit funny so I'm just going to grab my black ink again and bring it up higher and bring it up over onto those flowers and then it's going to look like they are part of the equation a bit more rather than sort of like random odd cut shapes. So just to even that around the rest of it. I must be, must be able to, my you know, creative brain must be able to tell I'm working with Angie's. <laughs> it's making me like do big dark edges. Right, I'm just going to pull in Emma's stencil again. I'm going to grab this stencil and I'm ooh, going to actually sketch through it. So I'm going to grab this cloud and I'm going to sketch the shape of the cloud. into my design because I do like a fluffy cloud. I'm going quiet now because I'm concentrating. Okay, so I've got two there. Let's have one coming off the page over here. And then I'm going to give them a little bit of colour with pink. Because why wouldn't you have a pink fluffy cloud? Got one there. And we'll have one here. I do love a cloud. Honestly, I have bought stamp sets in the past before just for a cloud stamp, even though clouds are the easiest thing in the world to draw yourself. And nearly all of my stamp sets, well, not necessarily like individual stamp sets, but if I'm doing a collection, I quite often make sure that there's a cloud in at least one of the stamp sets. <laughs> and I will have one going and then I'm also quite tempted to put some of the little hearts in. So I'm going to draw some of these in, like so. Cool. And I'm going to bring back my, um, going to bring back my makeshift palette with the oxide sprays and we'll fill some of this detail in. In a second. And I'll pop one up here. <laughs> okay. So we've got that and then because it's me, these are just about to get turned into dangles. Cause can't live without little dangles. This is just reminding me of something very secret I can't tell you about. <laughs> oh dear. Honestly, how I managed to keep things secret, I don't know. Right. Cool. I like but I want a little bit of emphasis to my clouds. So I'm bringing me blending palette come you're not technically meant to use your blending mat like this. Hopefully Bev. Bev or Bev's dad. <laughs> Doesn't see what I'm doing to their mat right now. The thing is it is what oxides is a water based product. Um so I can I will literally be spraying this and it will get added to my journal. Um, so it's all good. But um It'll be fine. I would definitely not do this with like, um, what do you call it, like a alcohol, not, not yeah, alcohol based product or acrylic or gloss sprays or anything like that. I would not be doing that on my mat. And it's gone kind of orange because we've got that green behind it, but hey ho. I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles. We can always get our white pen out again, which I may do, but it was just a sort of clouds to stand out a tiny little bit. What I could do is dry this and then put another layer of the pink over and it might stand out a bit more. 
the second time I do it. I maybe we should have stuck with blue, but I just fancied pink. <laughs> okay. Let's go in there and then get our little pink hearts in. Like so. Doopy doo. A little fantasy, fantasy mushroom world. It's definitely very Alice esque. Give that a little waft. And then try and bring some more pink in. See so having a layer of pink underneath makes it too. Actually, once it's dry, it's not too bad. It's not too orangey once it's dry. I can live with that. I'm still going to try and pop another little bit in just to see what occurs. Okay. It's definitely going browner than I want, but thankfully the oxide's dry with a chalky finish, so we're still sort of getting a fluffy cloud look going on. Even if it's not the colour I had in my head. Yep. I like it. Okay, the next thing I need to do is um, use the white pen to just pop a few highlights on and then probably a few splashes while I'm at it. And then I'm going to call that done because I really, really, as much as I would like to put a sentiment on it, I genuinely can't remember if what we'd said about that. Right, so let me get my doodle pen. I'm just going to doodle some of these heart elements back in because they've kind of been covered over by the oxide. So I don't mind so much for the clouds because it adds to their fluffiness, but I kind of want to see my hearts. Now, if I wasn't on a restricted set amount of products and you know I could break out onto my own I would be getting my sparkle pen or my souffles or something like that just to give those hearts a little bit of sparkle but I'm just gonna go around and start adding some highlights now to various bits I'm just trying to activate my pen things they sometimes just take a little bit of encouragement. I'm gonna scribble into my fluffy cloud and make it more fluffy. A bit of texture. Like so. Let's do that again. Oops. And the difference a little bit of white pen makes to life I tell you just really makes it pop and it's because you've got the dark of your shadows I'm getting a big green arm now because I've been leaning um, my arm in that makeshift paint palette I'm gonna need an entire shower over my whole self not just washing my hands to recover from this project <laughs> okay so I need to keep pulling it into it get my pen going again a little bit annoying. There we go. Oh yes. Thank you for letting me have my white pen, Angie. I do appreciate it. It does make a huge difference to my life. Right, and now I'm gonna try and shake my pen. Some splashes. Hope the camera's not shaking too much as I'm doing this because I'm really having to give it quite a firm shake. But we will get there. 
see the Wonders of White Pen, you can get many effects. This year I'm going to be doing my own splashes, look. Let's just go fast. <laughs> Drop out my pen fast in random places, because I'm getting bored waiting for it to... I'm literally, I am literally just dropping it. <laughs> There's no aiming involved here. Awesome. And I think, you know, a big sentiment there that said Wonderland would be awesome. But, I, I, as I said, I genuinely can't remember. So, um, just in case I wasn't supposed to have one, I'm going to be good. I'm just going to clear my desk a moment. Okay, so that is my project all finished. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out. It's definitely not sort of stuff that I would put, have put together on my own. And that's what I love about doing a challenge. Um, yeah, so it's it was fun. And I like my little funky mushroom scene that I have created. Anyway, if you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing. Also, I would love it if you pop over to Angie. Her details will be in the description box below. And see what she did with this challenge. Um, and... There will be more crafty goodies, goodness from me very soon. I've clearly lost the ability to speak. I say this but at the end of every video and now I can't remember. But yeah, I will be back very, very soon with some more crafty goodness. So thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye.